What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. In this session, we will be covering vector components, meaning finding the X and Y components of any arbitrary vector. This is a crucial topic if you want to do anything mathematics related revolving around physics. Because this is such an important topic, I will be approaching it in two alternative but compatible ways, namely one algebraic approach and one graphical interpretation. With the intro out of the way, let's get into it. We start out by drawing our initial vector that we will be looking at. So we draw our axis, our coordinate system, the x and the y axis, and we draw our vector c like this. So it will start from the origin and it will end in the point 3, 3. So this is our vector c. This means that in its component representation, we can write c is equal to 3, 3, which directly gives us the x and y components because we know that the first component is called the x component and the second component is called the y component. To find the vectors associated with the x and y component, we simply write the following. The vector cx will be equal to, for its x component, we write the x component of our original vector and for the y component, we simply write zero. So this vector is completely in the x direction because it has zero as its y component. The same can be done for cy, which will be the vector associated with the y component of our original vector. Its components are zero for x, and then the y component of our original vector as its y component. So this is a vector that is completely in the y direction. In this sense, we already algebraically found the vectors associated with the x and y component of our original vector. Before we go to the more graphical interpretation of our vectors cx and cy, I want to look at the magnitude of our vector c, our original vector. So we know that the magnitude of our vector c is simply equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of each of its components. So for the x component, we have three squared. And for the y component, we also have three squared because we know that the x and the y component both are three. This is simply equal to the square root of 18 because we have nine plus nine. However, this can be simplified by writing it as the square root of two times nine. And then this nine, we know what the square root of nine is. This is simply three. So we bring it outside of the square root and we end up with three times the square root of two, which is the magnitude of our initial vector. To deepen our understanding of the vectors corresponding to the X and Y components, let's now look at the graphical interpretation of these vectors. As our first example, we'll look at the X component. Again, we start out by first drawing our x and y axis, so our coordinate system, and our original c vector, which as a reminder, ends in the point three, three. To get the vector associated with the x component of c, we consider the following physical and visual scenario. Let's say that the vector c is a physical object, and we now beam in light parallel to the y axis and perpendicular to the x-axis. We see that here it is blocked by this physical object, the vector c, but where it's not blocked, it goes all the way through to the x-axis. So we can say that this is light that is perpendicular to the x-axis. And we see that our c vector casts a shadow. And it's exactly this shadow that will be our cx, so the vector associated with the x component of C. And if we follow this line on the edge, we see that this point will be exactly 3, 0. So again, the result that we found before. 3 is the x component of the vector C, and the vector associated with this component is C of x, which is 3, 0. Now we can also find a geometrical interpretation of the magnitude of C, x. And how do we do this? Well, we look at the triangle formed by three distances. First, we have our original vector C, and the length of this side is the magnitude of the vector C. 
the other side of the triangle is our vector cx and the magnitude or the length of this side of the triangle is simply the magnitude of cx and then we have this line connecting both ends of these vectors we see that this triangle is actually a right angled triangle and if we now additionally call this angle alpha which is this angle then we see that the cosine of alpha is equal to the length of this side which is simply the magnitude of cx divided by the length of this side of the triangle which is simply the magnitude of c rewriting this equation we find that the magnitude of cx so the vector associated with the x component of our original vector is simply equal to the magnitude of our original vector times the cosine of alpha so the only thing that we need now is what is the angle alpha and we know that for this specific case alpha is 45 degrees and this will always be the case if rc has an equal x and y component and in our case c indeed has as components 3 and 3 and if you are curious on the general formula to get a number for this angle then i can just say that alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the x component and in this case the y and x component are equal so this fraction will be 1 meaning the inverse tangent of 1 is equal to 45 degrees so we know that the cosine of 45 degrees is simply equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2 or written differently 1 divided by the square root of 2 and this number we can now easily fill in in our equation to find an expression or a number for the magnitude of cx because we know that the magnitude of c we calculated it to be three times the square root of two this is what we calculated in the beginning and we now simply multiply this by one divided by the square root of two so we can cancel the square roots of two and we are simply left with the number three which is indeed also what we found in the beginning of the video that the magnitude of cx the vector associated with the x component of c is simply equal to 3. so we found here that we can graphically represent the vector associated with the x component of our original vector by sending in light perpendicular to the x-axis and looking at the cast shadow of the c vector and then the magnitude can simply be found by looking at this formula where the magnitude of cx is equal to the magnitude of c times the cosine of alpha let's now do the same for the y component and get some more practice again we start out by drawing our x and y axis so our coordinate system then we draw our vector c in this case and to find the y component we do a very similar physical and graphical simulation however now we send in light parallel to the x-axis and perpendicular to the y-axis so we have light coming in perpendicular to the y-axis and here we see that the shadow cast by the c vector is the c y vector so the vector that is associated with the y component of our original vector c because if we follow this dotted line we will get components 0 3 and again we can now look at the magnitude of this vector c y by looking at the following triangle and for this side we again look at the vector c and this side has length the magnitude of c and now this side of the triangle will be our vector c y and the length of this side will be the magnitude of c y and then this side will be the x-axis so again we are looking now at this triangle where we translated c y to this side again we see that we have a right angled triangle and that this angle will again be called alpha in this case it will here be alpha we now see that with this angle alpha we know that the sine of alpha is equal to the length of this side which is the magnitude of cy 
divided by the length of this side, which is simply the magnitude of C. As we did before, we can now rewrite this formula to get directly the magnitude of Cy as being equal to the magnitude of C times the sine of alpha. And as before, we know that alpha is equal to 45 degrees, so that the sine of alpha is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2, which can be rewritten as 1 over the square root of 2. And this again, we can simply fill in here. So we can rewrite this as being 3 times the square root of 2, which is the magnitude of C that we calculated before, times 1 over the square root of 2. Again, cancelling the square roots, we get an end result that the magnitude of the vector that is associated with the y component of C is equal to 3. Again, what we found before. As a recap of this graphical interpretation, let's draw them all on the same axis. So let's draw our coordinate system, so the x-axis and the y-axis, and our original vector C, which has as components tree and tree. We saw that if we project this point onto the x-axis, to the point tree 0, we get the components of the vector associated with the x component of our initial vector, the vector cx. And if we project this point to the y-axis, to the point 0, 3, we will get the components of the y vector of our original vector, which is cy. And what we can see from this graph is that our original vector can be written as the sum of cx, so the vector associated with its x component, and cy, which is the vector associated with the y component. And this can be seen as the definition of these vectors cx and cy. So any vector can be written as the sum of a vector that is completely in the x direction and a vector that is completely in the y direction. And these are basically the component vectors of the vector c. Let's now go to a bonus really, because you might object that not all vectors start in the origin of our coordinate system. And that would be of course true. So thus our rule for calculating the magnitude of these component vectors with the cosine and the sine still hold true. Well, let's look at the vector C that starts in this point and ends in this point. So this is our original vector C. So how do we now work with this physical analogy of sending the light perpendicular to both axes. Let's first look at the x component, which was about sending light perpendicular to the x-axis. And we see that this will cast a shadow like this. And this will be our cx vector, which starts from this point and ends in this point. Then if we look at the y component, so the cy, we simply send in light perpendicular to the y-axis. So we get something like this. And the shadow that is now cast by our vector c will be this, and this will be cy. It starts by projecting this point to the y-axis and ends by projecting the end of c to the y-axis. So how about the magnitudes of cx and cy in this case? So first we determine the angle that our vector c makes with the x-axis. To do this, we can just translate the x-axis to where the c vector starts. And this shows us that this will be the angle alpha. And now we know that this distance, so the magnitude of the vector cx, is simply the magnitude of the vector c times the cosine of alpha. And the same holds for this distance, which will be the magnitude of the vector cy, is simply equal to the magnitude of the vector c times the sine of alpha. And this is how all of this fits together. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I hope you now better understand what vector components really mean and that you are more at ease with using them. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get notified by future releases, consider subscribing. And with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.